Hello, Montessorians, and thank you so much for joining us. This is uh, our very first coaching call, and we're going to go through, and, and um, veteran Montessorian Matt Hillis is going to explain uh, exactly how he grew his school to uh, near 500 students in four locations uh, using what we're calling the Montessori marketing method. Um, lesson number one is the Montessori admissions funnel. And Matt, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Super excited to be on the call with you today. Yeah. Glad to have you. And Matt's going to be with us every week, um, walking through one new topic until we get to uh, the end of the method, which we think is going to take us about a year, but it's going to be worth doing. Um, this is uh, actually in response to the, the, the single biggest criticism we received from our member base, which is, uh, I just don't know where to start. There's, there's too much content and I don't know where to start. And so um, the first three lessons that we're going to be presenting to you are foundational in construct and then we'll be driving into the, some of the strategies and, and, and tactics. Matt, do you want to speak to that a little bit before we, we get too far into uh, this particular lesson, just the way that the coaching calls are going to go uh, in aggregate? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, so many of us, when we are looking at marketing our Montessori school, about growing admissions, about getting mission appropriate families in, we want that silver bullet. And I just want to start out by saying that is a fantasy. There is no silver bullet. Um, marketing is something that works over time, and it's something you have to grind on in order it, for it to be effective. And so when we were starting this, we really wanted to uh, make sure that people had, make sure that Montessorians had the, the general landscape of how we're going to approach this for the long term versus giving somebody a quick fix that, um, number one, wouldn't necessarily work. And number two, even if it did work, it, it would be uh, very limited in terms of um, its effectiveness. So these calls, um, these coaching calls, we're starting out with a 50,000 foot view of how we're going to approach this. So these are much more broad. The first couple calls are very, very broad and conceptual. We're not talking about a specific tool. We're not telling you exactly what to do um, with your precious marketing dollars, but these are very important concepts for you to understand so that when you start to use the tools, you can use them in a way that is the most effective for your local community and your school. Very well said. And these are these are recorded live. So if you're watching the recordings, um, the, the recordings will be made available to our entire member base. Um, but if you're a second plane member or above, uh, you actually have the opportunity to join us live on Easy Webinar or on uh, Facebook Live. And the benefit to being here live is um, you get to ask questions. And we kind of make this a, an interactive experience, which I think just amplifies the value. Um, so without further ado, we dive into our Montessori admissions funnel. Uh, the admissions funnel is um, kind of a modified version of your standard sales and marketing funnel. And um, marketers have been using this since the beginning of time um, to understand the, the natural and logical sequence that a buyer goes through in order to make a purchasing decision. Um, so what we've done is, is, is we've taken the sales funnel, but, um, sort of turned it into, um, something that, that can apply specifically to Montessori schools and Montessorians. Matt, can you talk about, um, our, our admissions funnel here, um, and just give us the overview? Sure. Um, so there are six steps to our funnel. And if you look at the top, I mean, it is, it is, uh, purposefully, uh, a, a funnel in the sense that at the very top we have the largest amount of people, largest amount of inquiries, um, the largest amount of parents in your community uh, at this stage. But really what we do is through this process, we're tapering down um, with uh, different types of uh, messaging that we are using with uh, different types of, of marketing tools with the different types of content. So that by the end of it, when they are choosing to enroll, um, we have families that are mission appropriate. We have families that should be long-term families for your Montessori school. Um, and we should expect that um, when we started awareness, we're going to have um, as many people as we can get. Then we go to interest, consideration, intent, evaluation. And then by enrollment, we really have um, those families that we want to help build our school community. And one of the points I'd like to stress is, uh, especially on these first few calls, there's nothing actionable. There's nothing that we're asking um, our listeners to do. This is just information that 
is important to understand in order to take action uh, for subsequent calls. Okay, so there's a uh, there's actually a pretty big problem with the admission funnel as it stands. Um, and, and Matt, would you mind speaking to what that problem is and how we approach it? Sure. Um, well, the, the the problem is that Montessori is difficult for people to understand, and there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding about what Montessori is. I know this is not a, a big news for anybody on this this phone call. Um, people think so many different things about Montessori. And as you know, Montessori is not trademarked, so um, quality and practice can vary. So one of the issues is, is that we have, um, we have a lot more information to give them in order to prime that pump. If you go to a, if you go to a ABC preschool down the street, or you go to a play-based preschool, or even something corporate like a kinder care, it's very easy for people to understand what is happening. They're getting a preparation for traditional conventional school, right? That is the goal. We want the child to be ready when he or she goes into kindergarten to, to, to succeed in that program. We have a completely different purpose. Our purpose is to provide an education for life. There may be academic elements to that, of course there are. However, it's so much more than that. And so the earlier we can start talking about that, um, the better. And so that's the actually, it's the problem that we have in the sense that if you don't think that way, you're going to put yourself um, in, a, in a compromising position in terms of your funnel. But the opportunity is you can really be aware of the funnel and start to use those, those, top, um, those top portions of the funnel to really uh, educate people about what Montessori is and to give them the tools to help them make a decision if that's uh, best for their family and their child. Very well stated. The first step of the funnel um, is the awareness stage. And, and what's interesting about the awareness stage is, is it refers to their awareness of their problem, not their awareness of your school or you as a solution. Uh, Matt, can you talk about the awareness stage um, in your experience, uh, specifically from uh, the perspective of the parents that you've worked with and, and some of the steps you think they go through um, in order to, to kind of enter this, this initial phase? Sure. I mean, the awareness stage could start as, as early as somebody is in uh, college and is taking a class about Montessori, right? They may not have children for another 10 years, but they're starting to uh, be aware of what options are for early childhood education. And it, it's kind of like they've filed these things in their head about, oh, yeah, that's something that I learned about a long time ago. I've heard that a number of times from parents. I, I read about it in a book a long time ago, and, it, and it, it, it seemed intriguing to me. And I, and I just kind of pulled it up right now when I was and I was thinking about uh, what I was going to do with my child. So awareness can start um, years in advance. Typically, for our families, it will it will really start to kick in when people are um, thinking about having children, when people are initially pregnant, when they are um, expecting children, when they've just had their child, because the 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 deadline, for lack of a better word, is is starting to be. Um, much more of a reality. So uh, awareness is really, uh, it, it's, it's a key part of the, the stage because it's actually when they are entering and when they are really starting to uh, be receptive to anything uh, uh, about Montessori, but specifically what they're going to do with their child for his or her early education, what they're going to do with their child when they go back to work. Um, so it is a very broad stage, and at this at this point, I don't typically like to use Montessori specific content. I like to talk about some of the benefits um, in broad strokes about Montessori and some of the things we believe about children and about the nature of child development. But we're not going in there and talking about um, exactly what a child is going to learn in a Montessori primary environment at this point. It's much more conceptual. I think that's that's really well stated, and it's, it's interesting that you know you're not you're not. Uh, tackling the Montessori narrative, you're, you're really trying to establish yourself as a thought leader specifically for that parent. Um, because even if they're mission appropriate, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that they know about Montessori um, at all, right? I mean, a mission appropriate family could be almost completely in the dark uh, during the awareness stage. Correct. Correct. And so, you know, you're, you're, you're really trying to be as helpful as possible. And, and again, empathy really helps here when you're, when you're really thinking about what is it that they're facing. Um, what are their what are their 
um, anxieties about all of this. Um, things like it, that don't even have anything to do with Montessori, things about like safety. That's a huge concern when people um, are thinking about the most precious thing that they have in the world, which is their, their soon to be born or their newborn child. Um, you know, that's, that's been something effective that I've used at the awareness level as well. Um, so, so not thinking about it in terms of pedagogy right now, thinking about it in terms of the wants, needs, fears, and desires of people who um, are new parents or are soon to be new parents. And the awareness stage is difficult to measure. Um, you know, like you said, Matt, somebody could be in the awareness stage 10 years ago, uh, mm -hmm. having taken a college course, but as they transition from awareness to interest is where, um, in, in, and I don't want to say, I would say where kind of the marketing starts. Awareness is more thought leadership and um, content creation. Interest is where we begin to direct that process, maybe. Is that well stated? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people are, are starting to really think about, okay, so what is my what is my solution going to be? And there are so many options now. I, I always, you know, I, I, I've written this a lot on NEDO. Um, when our school started back in 1975, we were the only Montessori school in town. Um, there were not um, this proliferation of, of corporate preschools. There, there wasn't, um, there weren't Montessori charter schools, there were Montessori magnet schools. I mean, basically children were um, starting school at, at five when they went to um, kindergarten. And, and for people that, that, need, that were interested in early child education or, or needed um, some type of of care for their children in the day, there weren't a lot of options. And so it was super easy for us at that point, right? It was, it was, there was just a lack of competition that does not exist in 2018. It is, um, the market is saturated and there are many, many options. So at this point in the funnel, people are really starting to examine what those options are. And there are a bunch and people are going to get recommendations from all different, uh, people in their lives from, uh, people at work, from their family, from their mother, from their mother-in-law. I mean, it, it really, it really can be a, a, you never really know who these recommendations are coming from. And so some people are looking at a nanny, some people are looking at uh, a Montessori school. Some people have um, a preschool or childcare program based in their, their work on site, which is actually a very attractive thing. So they're really looking at all options and they're not making a decision yet, but they're really just gathering information. So they want to know how much things cost. They want to know, what the, the benefits of each of each option are. So some of the things that I've really used um, at this point um, have been um, very objective comparisons about what is best for um, for different people and what the advantages and disadvantages are. Of course, you know, I can subtly talk about why I believe the Montessori has um, the most advantages, but I'm being as objective as possible because when people are at this at this phase in the funnel, they are looking for um, almost like check sheets, bullet point things where they're looking at, okay, so it costs this much and this is benefit, benefit, benefit. And this is actually one of the, um, one of the things you should could, could consider that could be potentially negative. Like if somebody, if you have a nanny in your house, a nanny is going to have a, a very deep relationship with your child. It's consistent um, and you have direct control over them because they're working in your home and they're your employee. However, the, the negatives are, it tends to be very, very expensive. It tends to be hard to find a really good person and you really don't actually know what's happening with your child in the same way that you do when you're in a, a more structured program that is based off site. One of the things we refer to in the marketing world are your cocktail party questions. And these are the questions that you would get from a, a semi disinterested third party. So someone not necessarily shopping for your product or service, but somebody who got stuck next to you at, um, you know, at your buddy's cocktail party. Now they're asking questions um, about what it is you're offering. What are some of the, the cocktail party questions for Montessori schools? Cocktail questions for Montessori schools. I mean, so number one would probably, probably be, what is it? Um, tell me exactly what it is. And, you know, we, we've had, that's impossible to do. So that's kind of a false start. Mm -hmm. um, I, I tend to start to talk about um, some of the aspects of Montessori at this point. Um, the fact that um, you stay with the same teacher for three years, the fact that the child is allowed to learn at his or her own pace, um, the fact that 
the preparation for a Montessori teacher is uh, tends to be so much uh, deeper and more involved than um, other other preschools, or other early childhood programs. So the quality of adult you're going to get is um, is is different. That we are concerned about all aspects of a child's development, not just academic. We're concerned about emotional, social. Um, all of those things are um, interesting cocktail type questions that I um, I like to put out in the content in the interest phase of the funnel. Hmm. And as people travel through the interest phase and move into consideration, um, we're still using content, right, Matt? It's just it, we're changing context a little. Absolutely. I mean, so at, at this phase, again, we're, we're getting down the people who um, have learned a little bit more about your school in the interest phase. I mean, maybe like I said, you have that that family that's interested in Harvard. They're going to be interested in that academic preschool where they're just drilling and killing the children at two. And so by this point, they've realized, well, maybe Montessori isn't right. So they've opted out, which is exactly what we want them to do. Um, so at this point, they're really starting to talk to those trusted advisors. This is where those recommendations, this is where that word of mouth really kicks in. And um, if you don't have a referral program at your school, it's something that, that you should consider because this is really effective in this phase. We'll be talking about this um, specifically in a, in, in a one-off um, uh, in a one-off office hours in the future. But at this point, they're really looking for a trusted person who can say, my child went to this school and he loved it. He got this out of it. He got all these other benefits. And I'm really glad I made that, that choice. And Matt, one of the things you've done really well uh, at your school is is you've developed some some um, really powerful lead magnets. Can you tell us what a lead magnet is, how it's used, and, and what some of your favorites are? Sure. Um, so a, a lead magnet is uh, a piece of information that could be a, a PDF, that could be a video that you watch, that could be um, a uh, password-protected blog post in exchange for uh, somebody's email. And the idea behind this is that at this point, they really want some information to help them make a decision and they're willing to give their email address in exchange for it, it's free. But when we have their email address, the benefit that we have is that now we have, we have captured them as a, um, somebody that's interested in the school and it gives us the ability to follow up with them in perpetuity for free via email. And say what you will about email, I know we all get a ton of it, but it is the most intimate of connections that exists online. It is better than social media. Uh, you know, Facebook can change its terms of service. Instagram can change its, its terms of service and you could, you could lose your ability to connect with people. When you have somebody's email address, it never ever goes away and you can um, send, them, send them messages for free. And if you're really smart about it, it's an effective way of moving people um, through the other stages of the funnel. So, you know, we've, we've used a variety of things at this point. Um, one of the, one of a good lead magnet that we've had is we have a quiz on our website that asks, is Montessori right for your child? So at this point, you know, they are really starting to like, like it says here, make a soft decision on the model. And then they, and what a, what a great thing to do to be able to provide them a, a specific resource to be able to say, take this quiz and we're going to give you a, a quick answer about whether this is a good option for your specific child. So they take 20 different questions and depending on the, the, their answers, we can give them a response saying, yes, this could be a good option or no, you should probably look into other schools. And Matt, some of the, the pushback that I've received from a few of our members, we have near 400 members now, and, and I've been on the phone with a lot of them. Um, they feel that um, exchanging content for an email might be might be a slight turnoff. There's some trepidation among some of our, our uh, school administrators to to use this approach. Can you um, speak to that directly? Sure. I, I think it all comes down to whether or not you're providing value to people. And I mean, here's the reality: people want this information. They are motivated to make a decision, um, and 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 they want it. Now, it's your choice about whether or not you're going to have their contact information. And that's that really is your choice. I mean, if, if you would like to to basically have these these ghost engagements where somebody can show up on your website, read everything that you have and then never talk to you again, um, that's OK. I, I if I'm going to put in the time and the effort and to build really amazing content, 
I want to make sure that in exchange for that, I'm going to have an opportunity to keep contacting them. And of course, they always have the option to opt out. I never want to spam anybody, but they have raised their hand and they've said, I'm interested in this. And because of that, we're going to continue to follow up with them. And that's one of those things that I think that Montessorians really need to make peace with in the sense that we are just like everything else. We have a service and in, in this day and age, people are so distracted, they're so busy, they're so overworked, they're so overscheduled, that it is our duty to continue to follow up with them out of respect, as opposed to, you know, never talking to them again, and then them choosing ABC preschool down the street, or, um, you know, the, the fancy country day school, because those people were motivated to follow up with them. I see it as a way of saying, hey, I really appreciate your interest in us, and let's continue to have this conversation. And what's interesting about it, Matt, is I, I actually believe you can catalyze the next stage in the funnel. You can move people from consideration to intent with your content. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, that's exactly what it does. And when you speak more to the intent phase, Matt, this is the, the first phase where we might possibly hear from parents, but they still tend to be kind of at arm's length from us. What's your experience with this phase in the, in the admissions funnel? So uh, this is a, for me, this tends to be a, um, I, I think with all of these, if you look at the funnel, the, the ones that last the longest are at the top. So awareness, interest, consideration, it keeps getting shorter and shorter in terms of time length. So this is an even shorter um, amount of time that they're in this, but now they're looking for, um, for ways to validate their, um, their choice that you may be an option for them. So things like social proof, um, whether that's reviews on local, on local, whether that's reviews on, uh, on, on websites of your school, whether that is testimonials that are offered on your website, whether that is a case study that's offered on your website about why another family chose your school and what their experience is. Um, that is the, um, that is the stuff that really, really works well. This is also the time when they're starting to, to make a first contact with your school. So they, uh, they may be, um, subscribing to your email list, they may be, um, you know, you're going to be getting their email. And this is the time when you can start to really think about how do I want to interact with them online? We keep in mind, we haven't met them in person yet, right? But how are we going to um, send out our content that is helpful to them, that makes us seem friendly, that makes us seem um, accessible, that, that doesn't put up walls and barriers, that, that makes them feel welcome. So this is a great time to think about the content um, in, in that series that you're doing. And then just being very, very clear and iterative about what the process is gonna be. I know it sounds, it sounds kind of foolish, but one, one, of the, one of the best pieces of content we ever put out is, is, was a PDF about our admissions process. And keep in mind, this is on our website and other areas, but if we, when we used it as a download or when we were putting this out in an email, it was read quite a lot because it, it really responded to the needs of the family. Um, we assumed that they would just automatically know, hey, it's on our website. This is how you, this is what you need to go through in order to be admitted at our school. But when we put it out in a specific document, it was, uh, it was just very compelling for them. And that really um, spoke to me about what the needs of the parent is in this phase of the funnel. And uh, just a note for all of our members, there's quite a bit of content that's in our, our resources section, um, a lot of which was actually created by Matt. Um, and, you know, we have a... Uh, uh, a templated email follow-up sequence. We have some some white papers and blogs that he wrote, and and um, all of which I, I believe Matt you're still currently using for for your school, right? Absolutely. And, you know, and, and and quick note about this is that you can never be too obvious. You really need to think about. You know, we make this mistake a lot, where it's like, well, of course they should know. These are the steps that you need to go through in order to enroll at our school, or these are the things you should be considering. It, you have to you have to put that out in multiple ways repetitively to make sure that this actually seeps into their consciousness. And we make this assumption that, oh, we put it out and they, they understand. Most people will not. Again, that has to do with um, this doesn't have this is nothing about the, their ability to do it. It's really about their time and attention. And so when we can do this uh, repeatedly, when we can put it in a way that is clear, when we can put it in one document that they can go back and refer to, that's what I found really works well. Mm. And moving from intent uh, into evaluation, this is the phase that most Montessorians are familiar with. Um, mm -hmm. But you still you have a pretty proprietary process here, Matt. Can you can you talk to us about that? Sure. Um, 
so I've really laid out the the, the step the, the tour again. This is this is when they have um, they have they're coming in. We are meeting them in person, and this is where you really can't have any um, failures. And you need to make sure that you've really thought through every single aspect of what this is. So one of the best things we ever did is you know scheduling our tours online with a tool called Calendly. I know we've talked about that a lot at Nito, and I believe we have a couple courses available um, for uh, Plane 2 members and above. Um, this was a game changer for us because people could tour. Um, we used to have this thing where you know people had to call to schedule a tour, or they had to fill out a basic web form online. And our admissions director was spending two or three hours a day either on the phone with people or um, following up with people trying to, you know, coordinate calendars. And so what was so nice about Calendly is people could choose a specific time that coordinated with our admissions director's calendar. They could get an immediate confirmation. And then we could start to send them an automatic uh, autoresponder series, which started to prep them for the tour. So, you know, they know where to park when they arrive. They know what to expect. Um, we know all the information we need to know about them and their child so that we can start to have a conversation and hit the ground running and really use that time um, in the best way that we can. It's great for the parent because their experience is better, but it's also great for us because we can use, um, you know, we do upwards of 20 to 25 tours a week and and we need to be able to use that hour, that hour and a half that we have with each, with each family to the best of our ability. So it made us better, but it also made the experience for the family better. And we're not done marketing after the evaluation stage, even moving into enrollment, there's quite a bit that you do to, you know, validate their experience and decision. Um, can you talk to us about that, Matt? Sure. Um, you know, I, I, when I first started working at the school, I was noticing that, um, when we received the application from families, they have um, made the decision to be at our school. The process that we had for actually getting them in and getting them acclimated to our community was um, not great. And, and there were a couple times where we actually lost families in between the time that they enrolled and in between the time that they were scheduled to start because we weren't clear about what our expectations are. Mm -hmm. So this is, a, this is actually the most important phase of this process, in my opinion, because we had somebody. We have somebody who's mission appropriate. We have somebody who has chosen our school, and at this point, this is where we need to um, really be almost like a concierge, where we're getting them ready for, for getting their child ready for our program. It you cannot overthink this process. So how are they going to um, fill out their paperwork? You know, we used to do this all in paper, and now we do it all online for the ease of, of, uh, of the family. How do we set expectations with people about things like separation anxiety? How do we set expectations with people about what their first day of school is going to look like? Um, you know, we have I have a, a process at our school with part of this is in the first two weeks of of being in our program, the guide is reaching out to the, to the family every day for the first two weeks. And all that is about is building trust and managing expectations because we don't want uh, parents to think that we're not making their child a priority, that we are not, um, you know, we're not seeing their child, we're not receptive to what their needs are. So, so that's part of this process is really laying it out and making clear about what all of our actions are. And, and most of these actions, quite honestly, are a lot about those one on one type things. We have these balloons that we put up outside of our school every time we have a new family that starts so that they feel welcome. Um, and their, their name is on the whiteboard and, and we're welcoming them to our school. All of those things are part of this enrollment phase because what you're trying to do is we've planted the seed and now we really need to tend that soil and, and, and water it and make sure it's getting enough sun so that it's solid. And then after, after that, that period when they've been here for a month, then um, the normal things that happen in a Montessori environment can be managed by the guide. He or she is trained to do that, but we have to be very, very particular about that period between when the application is received and really uh, the start date and the first couple weeks after that to make sure that things are are solidified because it, it is it is a new relationship right and we need to pay very special attention to uh, families and children in this part of the funnel. And we'll actually speak uh, more to this particular phase when we talk about the Montessori family life cycle, um, which is the the topic that we have uh, assigned for next week. Um, but Matt, if you wouldn't mind, can you introduce that topic for us and just let us know what we can expect? 
Sure, absolutely. So the Montessori family life cycle is, is another conceptual idea, um, just like this is uh, the 50,000 foot view of, of the family, of the process that families go through when they're uh, choosing uh, a Montessori school, a preschool. Um, the, the Montessori family life cycle is about the, the, the stages of development, for lack of a better word, that families go through in your school. And this is um, all from uh, you know, before they've enrolled in your school to when their child graduates and when their child is going out into the community as a adolescent or an adult and really looking at the needs of the family through each of these different stages, because if we are aware of them and if we're receptive to them, we can better meet their needs to make sure that we have a, a very cohesive uh, community that, um, again, what this is about is about retention and about having uh, just a, building a good community for your school. And uh, as I stated at the beginning of this call, we're going to be doing these every Thursday. Uh, it's 1030 a.m. Pacific. And you can join us um, if you go to if you're a member at Needle Marketing, you're already getting the emails. Um, but you can go to needlemarketing.com forward slash coaching calls. Um, and that will give you the opportunity to register and join us live. If you are joining us live, uh, we're going to start taking questions. You can drop a, a question in the chat pane on the right hand side or if you're watching on Facebook live you can comment on the video um, otherwise the uh, the the uh, recorded version of this is is uh, done and and we're going to sign off but uh, just wanted to thank all of our members for watching Matt any any closing comments uh, closing comments would be um, this is a great thing to think about with um, your your team that is working on admissions for some people that's going to be you <laughs> maybe for larger schools it's going to be you and two or three or four other people this is a good thing also to um, involve your guides in as well as maybe other uh, trusted members of your community maybe a couple parents who you have because they can really start to give you some insights about um, about about different aspects of this funnel and all of this is about empathy in the sense that if we really understand uh, parents as they go through this funnel, we can better meet their needs. So the more information you have, think about building building your team of trusted advisors for people who, who you think can uh, help provide context information because you're not gonna know everything. So so start thinking about building your team and, and getting that information so you can really lay out this process for your specific school community. Thank you for that, Matt. Thanks for being here. You're welcome. Looking forward to the upcoming coaching calls. Yes, sir. See you next Thursday.